Yo, guys, welcome back to my podcast video. <laughs> <laughs> we should all go by code names. Joe Mama. <laughs> okay, we have Joe Mama, and we have... What's your name here? What's your name today? Um... Mike. We have Am um, here today. Yeah, Am, um, and then we got hey, you know Tiger me? Wolf 3000 XXD. Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? Bro, you have your gamer tag as your user? Bro, no. <laughs> now, I'm TV XXXXXW124. <laughs> and I'm back with another podcast. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me double my recorder. Oh, shit. Um, okay. Uh... Actually, that's shit, so I'm not going to use that. Anyway, guys, like, from my experience, why am I talking like that? Oh my god, Actually, guys, so in my experience with demons, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. That's all I gotta say. You can't just start off a topic and then stop! <laughs> exactly! Like, because you did have an experience with demons. Remember the symbol I gave you? The demon I told you to oh, talk oh, to yeah. in order so, to work with the fire? So I ended up throwing that away? So... <laughs> Por- yeah, Por- wow. Yo, you're, you're... No, I hope you get haunted by demons, because you no, did not. Okay, okay, listen, I tried, but I never stared at it and never did anything you told me to. So, like... Oh my God. Like... I don't know because like I threw it away like like a good month like two months ago. Like, this nigga <laughs> two months. <laughs> two months ago. Two That's months. That is I like, gave that to you over a month ago. <laughs> That's great. This is the second. Wow. I, I gave I, that to you I, I over a month so ago. How am I just I now hearing so about so this? Like, yeah. That's crazy. Like like. You didn't even come to me. You didn't. Even, oh my god! He oh did that shit before spring break. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh I swear. God. I did that way before uh, spring break. Like, we even mentioned the break. <laughs> shit, fuck a break. You did that. You did that in the middle of a week. Shit. Oh my god! It's like on a warm day. Christmas, like. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So the thing is, okay, so the way of respecting a demon. If you're aiming for a personal goal, you don't have to be like in direct communication with it if you're using its symbol. All you have to do is be respectful of it and know that you're doing it in its name, basically, um, which is just showing a sign of respect for it when you're using it because you're gaining some form of uh, well, uh like, you're gaining I, I the gotta, information you want from it. Podcast for a second. If you're as long as your mind is focusing on talking to them, if they decide to like if they're invoking <laughs> themselves, to you, then they will talk to you. Then they will like guide you and shit. Can you repeat that whole thing uh, with Mari asking the question? Because I paused it for a second. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right. So, like, does asking for something like go it's with like, Greek gods also, like instead of demons? Isn't also Greek gods? You know, all gods in general. Yeah, it's it technically it goes for even all entities in general that you're that you're wanting to communicate with and talk to. When talking to a specific deity, though, that you know the name of, that you have a symbol of, it is very prominent to, like, just have it on you or around you because that's showing that you want to connect with it. But as always, it's about intention. So as long as you're wanting to talk to it, you will get in contact with it just by having having its symbol on you. And there's a thing with telepathy where you're just focusing on focusing your mind to talk to them, act as if you're talking to them, and that's what you'll be doing. And you'll be getting information back through a very uh, very calm means. It's not going to be, it might not be as crazy as you think it will be, but it definitely will come. And that's as well, even if you're not conscious of it, subconsciously, you'll be acting in that manner because they have, the gods and deities, especially demons, have rulership over the subconscious. So they're able to influence you to act in proper manners that you're seeking, as long as you're showing respect, because there's a law of equal exchange. You give respect, you get the same respect back. If you give, like, hesitant, you're scared, you're in fear, that deity, no matter who it may be, can fuck you over just because they see that you're not living in the potential that you are, so they're teaching you a lesson. 
Oh. That's, that's actually really interesting. Because Gave since it. I didn't, like, fully believe in it, or I didn't, like, have this, like, oh, it's not gonna work type of mindset, maybe it kind of, like, didn't speak, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah especially when you're, some demons will influence you just, like, just, excuse me, but fuck off, because when being in a certain presence, they, uh, one, a demon is especially a entity that is always that's always around you. Demons rule the earth, and that's not a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It simply is. They are they're the subconscious part of our uh, consciousness, which we need in this reality. Uh, let's check your SIM card. Fuck you. Fuck you, motherfucker. I got another anyway. question. Uh huh. Okay, I heard you talk about telepathy earlier. Okay, oh, yeah. so I'm pretty sure y'all y'all had a moment like this before. So, friend, you know, talk to a friend, not talking, but you know what each other is saying. Like, you can say shit, but without saying it out loud. Is that like a concept of that a little bit? Because I feel like that's like, you know, brother telepathy or shit. Um, yeah, yeah. You're talking about like, how sometimes you just finish each other's sentences or just like you're just next to a person and like you just know that they're talking about something or when they're actually talking to somebody that when they're actually just speaking out loud and then they like you just know what they're talking about that type yeah. of thing yeah okay so that is a type of telepathy where it's um it comes from what okay so i'm gonna break this down a bit because there there's levels to this there is a conscious uh telepath which is what most people call uh what's the name empath because empathy is a form of emotion but it first occurs within the body telepathy telepathy tel tel eh, telepathy is an ability to tap into the mind of what it's experiencing right tap into thoughts and emotions but it's it's essence is okay, wait wait i, I actually have a really interesting point to bring up okay Okay. So, my mother, like, was listening to this as we were talking, right? And she she wanted to, like, know more about this. Because she is, like, she's Christian, so she's, like... Not a Christian. Well, she's kind of, like, a Christian-type person, right? Mm -hmm. Not denominational, but she still believes in, like, there's a God, and God rules over Earth, God right? God is any form. God is any form. Okay. So, okay. she wants to know, like, uh, she, like... Well, it's kind of like, what do, you, what do you mean by demons rule the earth, you know? Like, th because sh her idea of demon is, like, from Poltergeist and the Exorcist no, movies. <laughs> so, okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, no, no, talk in this podcast. Wait, okay. All thoughts are welcome here. We are always welcome to new thoughts and experiences. I don't mind sharing what I have, as long as you're open to hearing it. I just heard a whole therapy session. I don't know here. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> are we having like a sad moment right now because like oh no 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 chris uh jesse's mom uh had a little comment and wanted to know more about what i said about the demons ruling the earth and the aspect of that is that it they are part of us because there is nothing new under the sun so the information the technology we have now it existed in past times but in a different way right we, we you can see how they're like writing down on tablets so they had paper they had certain things which we didn't have now but it was in their own style so is this when you when you huh is this your belief or is it like a spiritual thing or oh uh, this is something that i've actually experienced like i've actually sat down and used my ability to go into the past and just see where things have come from because it, it really it gets way too extensive to talk about but actually know what i could i could ramble on forever but when talking about demons we have lilith right let she let's say lilith because she's known to be the biggest baddest one fought god nobody should go around her but when you think about it she's known to be a mother she's known to be the one that created all demons quote unquote which there is an aspect of that, but she's also known to be the one that nurtures the earth. 
She's the one that walks, one, she always walks in nature, and she's always one that walks with women who have been abused and hurt and nurture them into being full-blown mothers, people who are very receptive in their nature, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take this back. In ancient, in ancient times, I forgot which uh, century, but basically it her, her name originally was Lilitu, uh, uh, Lili, um, or Lili, Lele, uh, Lilus, no, Lilusi is Lucifer. Um, and there's a little correlation there with the nameplate, but uh, Lili, right? Her, she was originally a goddess of prosperity, the home, the hearth, which is basically abundance, prosperity uh, for self, uh, self-preservation. She was one that always was a warrior for the self, for the spirit. But along with time, her name changed to uh, Lilith, uh, Lilith to and eventually came back down to Lilith because of Christian Christian not and it's mainly not Christianity it's um not Judaism it's the Catholic Church which changed that and it's interesting because the Catholic Church has rulership over the Bibles and changes those at will so there's that but basically that's that's an aspect we see there her aspects her attributes when we apply them to ourselves we are very spirit we are spiritual beings in our nature we are uh, we are sexual beings. We are loving beings. We are mothers. We are fathers. We are birthers in our nature as well. Because men give birth to empires, cities, and states, while women give birth to the same empires and state, but in a very receptive manner, very dark manner, which has been manipulated to be something else. So demons, what we call demons are actually old gods, old entities, which have always been here guiding us and have rulership over the earth because they incite those subconscious parts of the self to bring about manifestation. So for example, we have, oh, let's use the same factor of Lilith. Uh, Lilith used to be prayed to to end marriages, to uh, avenge the suffering of a baby, of a child, uh, in ancient times, like Rome, when they were stealing babies, when they were killing them, eating them, a whole bunch of shit. Excuse my language, but that, that did happen. And when Lilith was prayed to, to get revenge, uh, a not just a woman incited her husband in the city where they were take where the babies were taken to start a revolt. And then the king got overthrown. And then a whole bunch of people died that night, even though the city still stood. And even though the babies died, like the um, that I want to say dark force still ran through the city and they weren't able to prosper ever again. They they literally crumbled. So using that that's just a very light nature light <laughs> yet dark nature of Lilith. But let's see the other side of it, a light manner of the, what we call this demon, this demoness. She brings birth, right? She brings uh, hearts, she brings sexuality, she brings understanding of the self. And this is represented through, when, actually this is very represented through women now, now in our society. They are go-getters, they are, oh, I don't need a man to support me. Uh, not that that's wrong or anything, I'm not saying any of this is bad, I'm just saying there's some aspects where she comes out. Uh, I don't need a man, I don't need to... I don't need help. I don't need anybody for this. I'm my own woman. I'm a warrior. I'm uh, standing my ground. Nobody's going to touch me. Yet you see them always with a type of prosperous oh. empire of some sorts. So this is an aspect. This is a positive aspect of Lilith. I have a whole. So, this, <laughs> so this is how, uh, in one way, that demons rule the earth. Demons are not quote-unquote evil, because there is no such thing. There is positive and negative, and each one serve each other. There is a balance in each one, and each one is divine in its own right. He's talking to Avatar. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Avatar. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like... Bless you! All of us have a little demon in us, you know? <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, hmm. I pumped on food. Uh, where do we go from here? Like, um, well, what are some mysteries that y'all want to find out? Like, any mysteries, just. Why does the mystery gang always fuck up? 
uh, because no, no, because I was, they they always amass their like the the mon- well quote unquote monsters, you know. But like, there's one myth. Like, why can Scooby talk? Like, has no one ever like looked into that shit? Like, it's a talking dog. No, 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 no. Because there <laughs> is a video. Have you seen like I don't know? No, no, no. Wait, no you're you not about to know. Have you seen the animation? What animation? There's an animation where it tells you how Scooby talks. Uh, look it up. Okay, okay. wait a minute. Look it up. Uh... Someone. Oh wait, maybe I could actually. Screen record it. One second. I uh, so I think. Wait, is it me? Is it Velma meets the original Velma? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm watching it right now. Screen record it. Oh, bet. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Can y'all see it? Not at all. No. Not a. All right, wait, give me one second. Go to screen share. That's what I'm trying to do. But I'm screen sharing. Where? Where was I? Man, you're taking forever. Okay. Oh, shut up. I'm doing it on my PC. Take Give your me one time. Okay. Time. Me personally, oh. I would not have taken this. I will poop on all of your front doors. I'll steal your kneecaps and fry them in front of you. That's just racist. That felt racist. <laughs> felt racist? How is that racist? Because black people eat chicken legs, and I'm a chicken leg, and yeah. Why well, you want to fry them? Wait, you, you could have baked me. You're, you're funny. Leg. You're you're a fucking chicken leg. Like, are, are, we, not gonna, are we not gonna acknowledge that? Like, <laughs> he's a chicken leg. He said he's a chicken leg. I mean, you could like bake me instead. You can't. You don't have like always fry. You know. You okay, I will chicken. bake your kneecaps and eat them in front of you. Thank you. Isn't that what you said the first time? No, he said fry. I'd, I'd fry your kneecaps and eat them in front of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Oh, because he will probably want some. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Wait, That's why he said. Oh, what? No, no. What? what? Oh, what? Some of his own no, kneecaps. Now, 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 you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know you like home bacon. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm joking. But Man, um, he left because of oh, he's back. Oh. Yeller! Man, he's oh, back. This sucks. Oh my gosh, he's screen sharing. Watch the stream. Hey, Michael, the stream. Okay, the stream. It? Yeah, we can see it. We just can't hear you. I cannot I see shit. It is loading on my oh side. My I see it. I see it. I found him right outside! Norville, that dog is big and brown, which is the exact opposite of Fred's tiny white dog. Velma? Uh, is something wrong? Yeah, you don't look too good. I need some air! What is going on here? Is this M- me kidding? So no, sadly, no. It's getting oh worse. I love you. You know that. 
right? I love all of you. But I don't understand. Why do you keep remembering? We'd go solving mysteries together. It was simple. Fun. But you started overcomplicating things. You know, I never really thought of it before. But why can Scooby talk? Now that you mention it, it is a bit odd. <laughs> yeah, like, what's up with that, man? Jeepers, Velma. You might be onto something. And suddenly... The fun was over. So I took what remained. And I rebuilt you. I rebuilt the world. And we were back to our classic adventures. You started to remember. Again. And again. And again. I just want what we once had. Yet each time, I capture less of your essence. This being my most flawed world yet. Flawed? But we're meta now! Ugh. Never the matter. I'll get it right. Next time. Please don't run. I don't to chase. So, how did everyone like that? Um, I'm gonna go throw up in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm traumatized. <laughs> what the fuck? Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay. So Scooby, right. so Scooby is the interdimensional meta god that's fucking psychotic as shit that doesn't want to know. Oh, why are you talking, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> oh. actually, that makes so much sense. Actually, once you get down to it, like. What? <laughs> like, I'm like, a... think about it. Scooby's design never really changed during like any other series just about any, any. I mean, kind of like the color changed. I mean, but why is he? I'm I'm looking it up. I was about to have a whole like fucking wows <laughs> out moment. Yeah. I'm about to search why can't Scooby talk, and I'm about to find like the best article about this. Oh, I just swear to God, it's called a fandom, and there's another one called We Got It Covered. It's that it is revealed that animals which can talk are descendants of the Anuna. Never mind. Wait, no, that's true. That's true. That's true. It says it's it's revealed no, that animals Anunnaki, which can talk are descendants of the Anunnaki, which does come up in the series. Scooby-Doo is one of them. Those who are descendants have a longer lifespan than normal animals and intelligent like the humans, which is true. And it is, uh, remember when Scooby met with that little, like, uh, uh, not daffodil, but that, that little dog uh, th that he liked? Drappy? And he started, uh, yeah, Drappy? and he started speaking about, yeah, yeah, that one. And he started speaking about how, oh, the Anunnaki come down every once in a thousand years, and... They oh, here, they're here to, they're uh, aren't, Wait. aren't those like the aliens that like came down or whatnot and like like gave us took over people's like, like no. gave humans like life I guess like they 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 mixed human DNA with Anunnaki DNA yeah and a hope they mixed reptilian greys uh they they re actually constructed the human brain to be wait, a consciousness and a subconscious so wait one one second sorry okay wait. Are those the things from that one um, Scooby Doo movie? Like when um, those demons, not, well, I, I don't want to call them demons, but those things that um, possess the humans. Yeah. I don't think so. Like you're talking about uh, the live action movies, right? Yes, the, the latest live action. The latest? Oh. Um, no, sorry, that was the last live action I've seen. I think that was. I am of the Anunnaki. Interdimensional beings that visit the planet Earth every few thousand years arrive at a time called Nibiru, when the barriers between our worlds grow weak. 
the Anunnaki. So they visited they on fucking October thir the 13th. Okay. That makes sense. Before, I understand how they can animals. This is why some right. animals, our descendants, can talk and others cannot. But not all Anunnaki are kind and good. There are evil ones. And the most evil one of all is imprisoned. Did you know at the, uh, here, let me share my, actually turn on my video. <laughs> Because they found a um, they found a tomb that is exactly like this. Really, like 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 engravings and all. Uh, turn on the fuck. Oh yeah, there was a a new tomb uh discovered in what is it called? Uh, the Great Pyramids. Ew, we get to see. Again? <laughs> you won't have to sleep for long. See this one? Yeah, it's a, it it was found uh... in a. And the temple was submerged under water, like it was. It was close to ocean. It was very much deep in the ocean, and they un they dug it up. About to make a side series about this podcast, like we're gonna go to the ocean and like check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, like, we're, we're about to start becoming the mystery gang. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, the ice projectioner, the Scooby Doo, and then who else? Who else? What, what, who would you be? You'd be Fred? Who? You. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I feel like I'd be shaggy, honestly. Like, what? Shaggy? I feel shaggy. Ah. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> uh, who, who would same I be? night for Jackson. <laughs> okay, wait. Who would actually be Fred, though? Because, like,. How about let's not be friends? Let's be a whole new gang because they're old and outdated. Like, they've been around for too long. Didn't they just make a new movie, like, two years ago? About the same niggas. <laughs> we don't get to know about that. Okay. Okay. So we're just... So it's going to be our catchphrases. Um... <laughs> Zoinky! <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I had... It. I had a habit of always saying when I was younger, uh, 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 actually, uh, yeah, God forsaken humans, or I would always say by, by demon blood, or I would say by angel blood if I'm feeling generous. I think or, I've heard you say, um, what was that going God. for? What was the first one you said? Uh, God forsaken humans. I think you said that at least like twice that I've known you. <laughs> Seriously? Like, I swear you said that at least two times. Oh my god. <laughs> what the f Okay, okay. That that tracks <laughs> because it sounds like me. <laughs> like this podcast. Wow. <laughs> uh yeah, but okay. Um let me see. How long have I been what? screen recording, honestly? Probably I'll give it like yeah, but it's a few minutes. It's like 34 now. Motherfucker, you goddamn crack pop on the seven pits of hell. I will crack destroy you. I'm not seeing you. Oh. 29 minutes. Oh, you, better start, you better start appearing because of. This nigga disappeared. Fuck you, crack pot ass looking like white rice on top of goddamn bleach. Fuck you. That, why does that sound like an Asian slur but not? <laughs> right? I mean, he does have some Asian in him. So, I mean, I do. Sure, so. It's so it's not racist. <laughs> no. <laughs> so podcast was supposed to be about racism. What are you mad? It's dark humor. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, I can still download it. Never mind. I'm good. Wait, download. Oh, I should like play Doki Doki and we like just like sit there Absolutely while not. we see everybody kill them. Absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely I, I played not. it. I, that, I that's love bloody. That, that's that's really, a lot of blood. Really I, I, I really love that game. Uh, yeah, if you start playing that, uh, this podcast is over. Um, yeah. um, but yeah, like honestly, I the reason what I wanted to find out when I was a kid was why I had visions in the first place. Because I, you know what? I don't want this just to be about me. So y'all motherfuckers better bring up some spiritual experiences you had next, okay? Y'all got it? Got it. Okay, good. Um, so, so the reason why I even got into spirituality was because like I'll have visions like on a constant basis to the point where it was interfering with my life. And I purposely suppressed it, but now 
but now I, uh, well, I tried to suppress it. I can never fully do it, but because it always see seeped out somewhere like a broken seal on a boat <laughs> kept flooding in. So, like, before I went to sleep or in the straight up in the beginning of the morning, now, now I just get them at random. Well, I still get them. At, I used to get them at random. Not I still get them at random. But they're always like triggered by something small. Not these crackpots, black motherfuckers looking like the bottom of the pot on a sad Sunday morning, looking like they left out to burnt the whole house. They better not be back. I think you're talking about your family, but you know I could be yes. wrong. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh dang. Are they back? Okay. No. Yeah. No. We're good. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I always come back. I always come back. But yeah, like that's the reason why I got into spirituality. I and like astral projection too, because I've always wanted to see other worlds. Like like the I I still have that passion now. Like I always wanted to see another world and create my own. And I'm so serious about creating my own world. I mean straight up make my own world to where like fucking what's the word? Um the air is full of what uh, LSD, so you're uh, tripping balls almost all the time, but you get used to it, so everything becomes normal. And actually, no, I'm being uh, that that just came up. That wasn't in, that wasn't how I viewed it in the past. But just creating a world, just being able to explore and see what's out there, because I know that there's more out there, and I want to experience that. I don't want nobody, no other motherfucker trying to stop me from that. Yo, I'm. There's an easy way to like discover other worlds like in your own like the way you want them or how to like the way that they are but you can view them on your own like uh-huh uh -huh. vr experience exactly like video games like oh my like, god like, you just spoke like vr chat on god <laughs> <laughs> yeah because like everyone act is like no one is should be trusted on vr chat like VR chat, uh, last time I checked, was just a lot of people are either horny, are playing too much with being horny, or are just are just to fuck with you. Oh, okay. yeah, I see. I, I'm coming over. I'm coming over. Yeah, I'm hey, outside your house. Excuse <laughs> you? Actually, <laughs> I've met a few, and yes, a very small few <laughs> of people that actually go on there to play games. And I friended a few of them, and we haven't played in a while, though, because we probably forgot about each other because of the break. But they were not on there being very um, hormonal. Sexually explicit? Yeah, that. And people be, like, down and on for a reason. Like, look, I'm not going to say that, you know, like, you know, they're chill. I've met a few in VR chat, and they helped me out. I mean, Yeah. Yeah, you can't, like, discriminate against, like, a whole community just because, like, two. Unless, unless it's My Hero community. But, it's all okay, yeah, My Hero community. Por que? You're beefing no. on My Hero Academia? I will come after your ass. Okay, look, they make way too many fandoms, bro. I'm no fan. Oh, I like oh, the, oh the community. I thought you were talking about the anime. Never mind. Yeah, the they should Bakugo and Deku too much, and they are not even together. They're not close to being together. Bro, they have, you like, they don't even know just that, like, all the characters in there are underage, and then they like oh the fan art is crazy. Like they have them looking like thirty. And it's also, bro, the fact that they um, shoot, I'm watching what, shit. The fact is that they make them look too old, and that's not what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something about My Hero Academia. Okay, they, I know. I know they fantasize about them too much because they make them over the top stupid. Yeah. And no, I, I forgot my thoughts, so never mind. It's fine. Uh, I'm out of room for later. But yeah, I completely agree with you. They can fuck off. Oh, shit. So, uh, if we're talking about uh, spiritual experiences, I mean, I haven't had any like that, but no, I, I, I swear to God my house is haunted, though. <clears throat> No, what, what do you... Keep going. Keep going. Let, let's hear the experience. Okay, so I've had... Uh, so... Before my brother... Uh, he, well, my brother, like, before he died, right? 
mm-hmm. like I I could go to bed like in the dark and stuff like that. Like I I, I could like just go to bed in pure pit, pitch black darkness with nothing around me, or like uh like I felt safe in my home at night, right? But as soon as he died, as soon as he died, I I would come into my room and there's like three distinct times where I just couldn't sleep anymore in my room. And this was like grown grown person me. So this was like two years ago, uh like me experiencing things these these things. Two of them two years ago. Or like a, a year ago. So one time I went to bed, right, and this is back when I still felt kinda safe. I was in here and then I had a dream, right? I, it was like so real. I got out of my room, and my mom's room is right next to me. So I got out of my room, and then, like, it was daytime in my dream. So I thought it was morning. And I felt kind of drowsy, you know, like the type of drowsiness where you could barely stand. Yeah. Right. I, I, saw, I saw a woman, right? It was, it was a woman, like, really tall, pale, Asian, really dark black hair. Okay. Right, uh, just standing over me, and I fell down to the ground in my dream, and it felt so real because it hurt. And then, like, I was trying to crawl away, but I couldn't. And like after that experience, like I woke up in a very cold sweat, like I was sweating so hard. And then the scariest one, the scariest one, I was awake. And I, it wasn't like, I wasn't a like sleep paralysis because I could still move. So I was laying in my bed and I have like, I used to have this like dresser that sat at the the end of my bed and my bed's on the floor. Okay. So this dresser would sit at the end of my bed and I can't see past that dresser. So I got a good like couple of feet in front of me and, uh, this, this man, like, I woke up, and then there's this man standing over me. It was a white man. Uh, he could have been somewhat mixed with Asian. Uh, brown hair. Uh, he, I, he was a very skinny, short man. And he was standing over me, and then he walked away. Like, behind the dresser. And I, I was moving, too. Like, I was, I was backing up trying to get my flashlight, because I had my flashlight on the ground. Because I was starting, to, like, this was, like, a couple months after, like, the the woman, right? So I was trying to get my flashlight, which I had, like, kind of slid in between my bed. And, like, it was really scary, so. Wow. Okay. Yes! I had my pick the whole goddamn day. Anyway. um, Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because you said it felt real, right? Yeah, it felt real. The the first one, like the one with the woman. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I'm. Fuck it. We're on a podcast. Uh. Um. So, for me. The first experience I ever had with something that was like that was uh, when I was five and I first moved into the apartment with my mother. She had uh, she she didn't have a place for me to sleep or anything, so I was sleeping on the floor. And that night, it was like the first night of actually sleeping there. And I had a dream where I had gotten up and I was walking towards the kitchen. And in the kitchen, everything seemed fine. The light was on, so I, I was just chilling. Actually, no, the ch- light was off. And what freaked me out was that this the refrigerator door opened, but outside, but what was coming out of it was a skeleton hand and arm. And I remember I tried screaming, but there was not there nothing came out. It it was just like I wasn't using my vocal cords. It felt like I wasn't using my vocal cords or anything, but I know I was screaming. And when I woke up, I, I I woke up screaming, but I didn't have a voice because, for whatever reason, I just I just couldn't scream. I'm not <laughs> gonna it was lie weird. to you that 
that kind of sounds like a five year old would have that type of like dream. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, kind of cringe. Yeah, and if you ask me. I guess it was um because the way the entities come in, in and out of dimensions is weird. Is very interesting because on the astral plane, everything is fluid. You so you have to be on a specific frequency in order for things to become solid, but yet they're still fluid. Like they're still subject to change very easily. And when you're a kid, you're very susceptible to susceptible to those things, especially when you're a kid. So because you're not trained to block anything out. Um, so what happened there was I'm guessing like something was actually coming through and had it fully formed their being yet. <laughs> At least that's what I believe, because I really hadn't thought about that for a while. Because that, I'm be honest, that flip, that freaked me out. <laughs> and ever since then, my mother kept the light on at the stove in order to make sure. Well, it. I just guess she said to keep the demons away or whatever. But um. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. So uh, with. Like when I was talking about my brother, right? My brother that died. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, when he passed away, like, okay, first of all, he said he was seeing a horse, right? Like a horse coming down and getting him, why not, right? And so my mom was there when my my sister, well, my my brother died, right? And she went to the kitchen, and all of a sudden, like, it felt like an earthquake. It was like rumbling, like it almost took her down, it took my sister down too. Like she was there too. So that that was crazy because like I remember my mom telling me that afterwards because it like it it took her down, and my my brother had a very strong soul. Okay. I know he wasn't spiritual at all, but like he he had a like a strong soul. So, oh, I see. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. I don't know much about that, honestly. Again, it could be. Um, honestly, that's most likely. Now that I have a thought about what it could be. It could be. Um, the astral body you're always connected to so when you have like slight pains that come out of nowhere and you're like you check yourself and you don't know know anywhere if you don't know where it comes from because there's nothing sore on you because you're not feeling sore that's that's why because the astral body is feeling it if it feels like you're getting taken under that's because the astral body is feeling that because we are spiritual beings and in our nature and they, we are always going to be some form of aware of it. Like we, it's we can't refuse it. So that's what it sounds like. That's what that's what happened. But you, you said it happened to t- you. It happened to your mother and your sister. Yeah, like so, it wasn't just her. Like it wasn't just like a like a type of human thing where they just like your your brain gets too overstimulated so it like kind of falls down like to its knees or whatnot because it was really hard experience for her obviously but like uh it maybe happened to my sister too a horse is a sign of travel and a sign of um uh travel enlightenment uh long journey and you're saying that it that it happened to two people God. What 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 time of day was it? Was it like night? Was it midday? I think it it was it was it was like a little after dinner. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, during that time it, it you're more susceptible to it. Wait, did it feel like they were falling out of their bodies? I I don't really know, but I, I do I do remember uh her telling me like that it so she was walking to the, ke- the kitchen to go cry, but before she could cry, like the earth started, like it felt like an earthquake with my sister as well. And my sister was already in the kitchen, so like, yeah. 
Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Because at a certain time of day, you can naturally astral project because you become more sensitive to that body. So if they were doing some type of, if there were any type of practice that they were doing that was making them aware of that, even if it was subconscious, then because it does feel like you're falling and you're uh, moving, it's, it's, it's a very odd sensation that comes up, but maybe that's not it. Yeah. But that that definitely sounds that yeah. sounds freaky because when the earth ooh, I think I've had that experience before. I'm trying to remember when though. Yeah, my my mom it, like she's spiritual, but not in the type of way that you're spiritual. She's like <laughs> okay, so she she has some ideal I, ideologies from like Christianity, right? But right, but like she also believes in like ghosts and spirits and stuff like that and she can sometimes like feel their presence like and i have that too like i can sometimes feel when like there's a presence around me not see it but feel it you know okay okay yeah so maybe she felt him leave the earth because we were very close to him I mean, that's not checking because when a soul leaves, their presence leaves, their sense of being leaves. Like you're knowing that that person is around or that sense of security. It shouldn't cause an earthquake for you. Maybe it, it's, a, it's a possibility. All I'm saying is just that that's very different from my experience. Yeah. Uh, also, also, uh, thing is like i don't know like because sometimes we'll just have random things happen that are too coincidental for them to be like uh, uh, also where has amari on been like he hasn't oh, i've still been here i've just been listening okay so yeah, so like we'll have two coincidental things happen so like after he passed uh, a bird flew into the garage and like this is like a couple of weeks after he passed, the bird flew into the garage, and we had to try to get it out. And then another one flew into the uh, the window, and we had to get it out. So then we had to like my mom was washing his old clothes, and it's actually the same jacket I'm wearing now. Uh, she found in the pocket, uh, like a necklace with birds on it in his like thing. I think he was trying to send a message or something. I don't know. Uh, but this is not for, like, someone to come in, like, I, I don't want answers, okay? Uh, this is just me sharing things out, I guess. That's valid, that's valid. Yeah. That's, like, <laughs> that's very interesting. Things that have helped me grow as a person, I guess. Mm. Ooh, cash out. How about you, Mari? Oh, my bad. I was taking a piss. What happened? <laughs> Ex spiritual experiences. Oh, um, I wouldn't. I don't know if I would call it a spiritual. Maybe just weirdly coincidental. All right. So let's start. Uh, small backstory. Um, this is when we're coming, like, just leaving Florida, and <clears throat> we start. Um, you know, going at a little hotel in Atlanta, you know, because we didn't, you know, have that much money when we came. So, um, you know how cheap um, rental apartments, you know, the lights flicker and junk and all that, that and everything's all broken and shit. Yeah. So um, we were able to move in with our aunt sometime later, right? She let us stay there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm sleeping in the um, work room, in the work study room. And... You know the lights start, um, you know, dimming, um, dimming on and off and stuff like that. And I didn't think of anything. Okay, I was just like, you know, maybe she fucking doesn't know how to put on a damn light bulb, and she just let that one in. So I didn't care. So I went to go um, wash my ass and play some Melanie Martinez. Don't ask why, but mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the, the um the light dimming thing starts happening again, and I'm like. Okay. 
And, um, okay. you know, I go to my room. I start trying to play um, Apex, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was that? What? I just heard, mm, um, I um, said, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> um, so um, I start playing a little bit, right? And, um, you know, I'm playing and drunk. All that mess definitely didn't get fucked up a few times. Um, then my entire um, monitor for my PlayStation just like so you know the little the um the static thing that happens there are cable TVs. Yeah, yeah. That happened for like a quick second and then it shut off. Right. And I'm like, this is a monitor. It doesn't have fucking cable or like cable cords in general. It's just like you know the HDMI cords and the headphone cord. And, you know, they got me a little bit weary, so I asked my aunt, hey, uh, did you pay your electricity? Or did, like, someone fuck up your electricity when you did a security system check? And she said, no, everything's working fine. I'm over here, like, contemplating, like, did I do something? Did I, like, like not flush that one time and, like, a piss demon is fucking oh, on me or something? No. No. The pee-pee like, demon. God, bro, like, he flickering my lights and shit because I got to flush the toilet at one time in the hotel. It's like uh, that Spongebob episode, like, where the, like, the vampire's, like, flipping it up and down the light switch, right? No one knows that? Mm-hmm. I guess I'll kill myself. Okay. My bad, bro. I was drinking water. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. It's been happening in the... Um, it stopped after a little bit. Um, but it just started happening again with my LED lights. And it just flicker. Mm-hmm. And like it won't it won't like be on like a whole rainbow color, just switch colors and shit. It'll be on like I would choose a solid color for the day or the night. And that shit will like start flickering randomly out of nowhere. Well how long do you have it on? Like do you have it on all day and night? No, I turn it off sometimes, you know, because I don't like wasting electricity. Oh, that's cool. Well, the pee pee poo demon's gonna come after you. Okay. Um, it could have been a local spirit, honestly. <laughs> they have a habit. They are lost, in all honesty. They are so lost that they can see other people as the people of their lives, and so they're trying to communicate with them. No, that's not even the worst part. Sorry. Like, do y'all ever, like... Like, okay, you know, usually you'll have this feeling, but, like, I keep feeling that I can see something. Like, I'll hear a weird noise. I'll turn, you know, maybe for a second, I'll see, like, you know, a shadow. And then it's like, poof, ain't nothing there for real, for real. And I'm thinking I'm some crazy-ass Negro that's probably been doing drugs. But that was before I started vaping and shit. So I was like, you know, um, that's probably all in my head. But, like, that that is constant, man. It's creepy as fuck. Like, I'll be, like, this happens during school sometimes. Yeah. I'll be like, like there'll be no one in the hallway. It'll be like a clear ass hallway, and I'm walking through there, like it's nothing happening. I hear a weird noise, like close to me and shit. Like it's right behind me almost. I turn, no one's in the hallway, or if there's someone there, there's someone like all the way at the double doors, and I'm like all the way across like the bottom part of the hall. So like, is, is that a thing, or am I just like retarded? No, that's like, probably maybe, retarded. maybe the second one. Maybe the second one. Oh, okay, Jesse. <laughs> thanks. Remember that during RPC. Come on, so come on. that that's a thing because that happened with me in the beginning too. I used to see just shadows. Actually, no, what I I used to see full blown people when I was younger. Uh, we went to what was it? New York? Not not New York. We went to the inner state of Chicago, right? I am walking. Like the walking. inner city, and all, we went to the inner city of Chicago, and I would see these people that were just walk around. And then it w- it wasn't normal. Like there was a sense of like eeriness about the day, and it felt it didn't feel like comforting. It felt just like it was alive, and not the good type of alive. It just felt there. Yeah. There were other things such as like when I was younger, uh, when I first moved to that neighborhood uh, in Chicago, mm-hmm. I was walking about and I didn't know where to go, and there was this old lady that just <laughs> appeared out the blue, like. Because I was wondering, like, okay, where am I? And so she told me, 
uh, go that way, right? She pointed where to go. And so everything was I, like, I went that way, but when I looked back, she wasn't there. Oh, and more recently, uh, <laughs> which was last year, I, when I was with my uncle, I was just like going, we were working on his, in his garage and it was massive, like the garage is massive, but I, I could see out my peripherals, like a guy with a yellow shirt and jeans, right? And at first I looked over and I'm full on seeing him, he was just standing. And so then I look back at my stuff, but then I see on my peripheral, he is straight up running at me. And so like, I literally like flinch and, and stand up and I'm like, I like, I'm freaking out because I didn't understand like why. No, no it just shocked me being honest. Like it just shook me a bit. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely real. It's definitely a thing because when you have, uh, I want to say that when you have that supernatural ability to see those things, you have the opportunity to cultivate it or you have the opportunity to uh, just throw it to the side because it's throw it to the side. But once you get, once you're able to manage your ability, you gain like protection, you gain knowledge and wisdom of how to use it and how other entities don't fuck with you once you do that. Yeah. I'll... Then, uh... Oh, uh, continue. Okay. Go uh, I would also say, like, a natural, like, the more you grow, the more uh, they're going to want your light. Like, certain entities want your light because it's, it's literally like a light light bulb with a, uh, it's, okay, it's like a light bulb and moths just coming to it. It's the same principle when other entities that really just want your energy. So, why do they want my light? Because they, they want, want that same energy. Uh, imagine that it's like, uh, you know how hot water eventually becomes cold? Yes. And do you know how uh, molecules move from fast pace to slow? No. Okay, well, that there's okay. that's, that's science, basically, where molecules that are moving faster than each other, well, that are just like bouncing around, there's no structure to them, they eventually have to come down to that solid structure to that uh state where they are in order basically and the reason why is because that's just a lot of the universe where things are natural where they become natural excuse me they're where they become in order i'm watching <laughs> adventure time so <laughs> excuse me if i got a little distracted but th things that go things have to come in order chaos has to go to order so th beings that are chaotic in nature, that are uh, ju just like negative, like negative entities, they will be attracted to you to take your energy, right? And mm -hmm. it could be bad. It can be a really bad experience if you don't know how to use the experience to become better and more aware. Because they'll just be, they don't, they don't have a concept of good, bad, uh, uh, good and evil. They just know that that's what they need to do as the beings that they are. Things with trickster spirits, like they're all coming from that negative aspect, and the overall, the the purpose of like gaining control over your power is to gain like your own knowledge on how to use them, right? But you also have to like reach. Eventually, if you have the awareness, you will reach out to other entities that are beneficial to you, or they will reach out to you. So then they can add that energetic protection. Think of it like um, a contract. Uh, not really a contract, more like a blessing, if you will. They because they, they teach you, they teach you how to hone their ability of protection. How how no entity messes with them in that manner. So they will teach you how to do it. They'll give you challenges by okay. actually maybe even bringing in those same entities, but it's specific. It's strategic. Um, and yeah, like that's honestly, it, it might be a little shaky, but if you keep, there is no full blown protection. If you do a cleansing ritual and you uh, protect yourself for your time being, you, that, that's fine and dandy, but you'll have to keep that up. And that's not really beneficial when you could be taking energy. This is just my idea when you can be t literally either killing them and then taking the energy. 
or straight up just why would you want taking to kill their energy them? in general? Huh? Why would you want to kill them though? Because <laughs> because well because of being attacked. Because in, those entities are relentless after they get just even a small taste of what you have and they know what you're doing. They're gonna see you as food and nothing more. Maybe there's a way to communicate with them in a better fashion. If they're not all gone, you know? I mean, I'm it could be. <laughs> okay, uh, let me. What, what is the best way of explaining this? Let's take Jake, right? Jake from Adventure Jake. Time. Oh, Jake no. from Adventure Time, right? And you know how he went up against the witch? Actually, the uh, lich, right? Yeah. Yeah. The lich got free. The lich w- uh, went and just kept doing his thing, right? And he they thought he was Kelly gone. Too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they that. thought he was gone at first, right? Even though he was in the snail, we knew that. But he thought everything was fine and dandy. That Oh, it was defeated. Right. But what, what was un- misunderstood was that that's not how you defeat that type of entity. And in the end, he did ask, why are you doing this? And like in some point of that discussion that whole argument that they had but he asked why are you doing this and then he if i'm correct he got the answer it was that he wanted to control the world right and jay couldn't have that so he destroyed him he he destroyed the lid it's it's take you can use that same principle in this aspect these entities want to dominate you they want to take your consciousness and just feed off of you. They want to make you living cattle for them. They, 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 they don't. They do. literally don't care about your improvement. Man, then I must have so many. Like, <laughs> oh, I feel you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, question. Well, technically, statement and question. Um, Say it. Okay, so yes, the lich was defeated at the end of the um Avengers Time series used by um you know. But there's hundreds and thousands of alternate universes. That's what I'm saying. Because like yeah. technically, the Lich never he's Bye. never gone. Like just like like just like how Jake and Finn were reincarnated as, you know, that tiny little bunny and the big queen dog of the universe some type shit. Yeah. Like the Lich will come back as something else. Like even if it's his regular form or a new transformation. Yeah, the Lich and never died. Really. really. You can't kill a god like that. I mean, unless exactly. you exactly, like, exactly. That's I, why. Oh, my bad. I interrupted you. My bad. Sorry. Um, I, I was I was just about to say. Um, there's no way you can kill off the lich without killing all the um four elements. You know, the slime, candy, fire, and ice type shit. Cause right. It, yeah. Cause like if they, well, even LSP, cause she's like the anti magic type shit. If you can kill off those elements, then maybe the lich. You know, will be dead forever, forever, because he can't live without the elements, and he needs the he needs the elements to thrive in general. Sorry, I'm talking too much. I'm stop. I'm done. Okay, that is very <clears throat> true. That's why. That's why I said it's better to um take their energy as your own. And the motherfucking crackpots are back. <sighs> crackpots. I Hold mean, on. this uh, podcast has been reaching like one hour and 30 minutes. Uh, one hour and uh, three minutes. So I nine, think we ten, could try to wrap it up like right now if y'all wanted to. Okay. Um, so anyone got any more you know, small comments they would have put in before we end the podcast? Sure. Uh, what I was going to say is that that's why Did you get my pay? That's why I said I'm doing something. Ooh. God damn humans. That's why I that's why I said it's better to just kill them off by taking their energy. Like cuz that's all that those entities are. They are energy. And you can quote unquote vampirize them, turning them into source yeah. energy, which is base energy. And then use that to increase your own energy and your own psychic abilities, powers, and power in general. Okay, what if there's a way to gain that energy without taking from other ones and like defend yourself without killing them? Is that isn't that like is there a pacifist sorry. way? 
Mm, you're trying to take energy from an entity without killing it. Isn't no, that just called no, possession, no, no. technically? No, I'm I'm saying like, is there a way to get energy without killing or hurting or like, like pacifist? You know, isn't that, uh, isn't that just possession, kind of? Because I know when um certain entities possess you, like you and the entity can also thrive together and live. You know, coexist. Oh yeah, okay, you just, yeah. Is there the like ability? a symbiotic relationship that you could have, like that is beneficial? Is that a biological word for it? At for, um, <laughs> I would not recommend that because that's like having 2,000 million thoughts in your head and you cannot pin down one of them. I have those regularly. Cool. Like, <laughs> just have one. Just have one. Like, <laughs> Okay, okay. So from my, from my understanding of what I've known so far, that is possible. You, you, you can, like, trap a demon or, excuse me, not a demon, but an entity that is negative in your body and like quote unquote exists harmoniously because they're feeding off your energy and you're feeding and you're basically feeding them, but oh. you're you're fine with it. Uh that's a pacifistic way. And then from that, even from that, you still have to use some form of vampirism, which is taking energy in order to like use their power. Yeah, but, but if you you're to hurt them, like did okay, are they I mean, were they once so? human? Can I contact their once human form if that's how it works? He's no, because <laughs> the avatar. Um, most of them no, unless they are a ghost, unless they are uh, no, no, unless they are Metatron and fucking uh, Metatron and what's his name, Zedekiel? No, not Zedekiel. What's what's Metatron was once human. And there was another angel that was once human, and I Wait. it was Sandalphon. I think it was Sandalphon because. Because uh, Metatron was once known as Enoch. That's why we have the Book of Enoch that speaks about uh, all that lovely jizz. But yeah, like, no, no other entity which I have a conscious understanding of has been human, except for like Luciferian beings. But you, they are human now. They are in physical bodies, and they are going. They're on the path of remembering who they are and becoming Lucifer again. But that's for another time. Um, yeah, I'll explain that another time. But yeah, like, okay. I'm gonna find a way to like make a symbiotic or like, no, not symbiotic, really? like coexistence with a being and not hurt them, but also benefit me while benefiting them. You realize that that would oh, also... yeah. wait. <laughs> You're just talking about freaking uh, like you a symbiotic relationship, which means you two can exist together. Not all entities want that. Not not all entities want that. So yeah, if, they want to take over me, right? So why not let yes. this in? Um, but no, 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 no. You, you, I don't think you're like fully grasping what I'm saying. They don't want to like, oh, take your body and you know exist that way. They want to dominate you, as in you are cattle going through pain and suffering on a daily. Every second you wake up, every day you walk outside and see the sun. It's that type so of thing. they feed off my negative energy. Because what they feed off of is negative energy. So you can't you, you can't really <laughs> symbiotically exist with them unless you want to deal with constant pain and suffering. Wait, te- wait, technically question. You said since they feed off of dark energy, that's how they yeah. exist, right? So mm-hmm. what if, like, for example, um, you know, probably a kid from school, he has all this negative and dark energy woed up inside him. Could he technically coexist? Because if Could the I feed creature or the entity, hmm? can I feed oh, someone uh, with dark emotions, like you know, a Marion, like to like? Can I feed them that? Can I feed a Marion? Wait, what? You you went in and out. I couldn't. I didn't hear you. Oh, can I feed a Marion to the, the to? Yo, uh, I will smite you. Um. I I am I learned a lot from Loki, okay? And being a god of mischief has taught me some mischievous ways. So it's, in order to answer this in a way which will not hurt Amarion. Oh, oh okay. It, oh man. It is it it is possible to ascertain the said spirit and then shoot it at a person per se. Uh-huh. You try to make that shit sound like you ain't trying to shoot me with a damn ghost. Well bam. 
We'll ban him. Like, <laughs> fuck all y'all. <laughs> but if that person can overcome those challenges over and over again of what that being has, then they inherently either absorb it or full on destroy the energy current. And that sends it back to source. And so uh, that, that's a whole process. But either they absorb it, absorb it. And so they literally break down the energy, which is basically killing the spirit. And then it becomes uh, base energy again, source energy. And so it then increases their uh, connection to their intuition. So what uh, are these like entities? Like since they weren't always human or they weren't weren't human, what are they then? Their energy. Their, ener- their aspects of energy that have formed a consciousness by compression and belief. I compress my body. For example, for example, uh let's say we just have a negative entity which uh you like, used to think existed, right? Yeah. Like you, the giraffe. Uh like let's say you have a fear of something, right? Ooh, and so you're just you're just existing. You used to exist within that. Ooh, you move on to a different time space you're living fine and free but you suppress that side right yeah uh, that can form a type of entity but it's really not the one that i'm focusing on um so Wait. i'm just gonna say like a dark energy and en- energy in general yeah we the, everything back consciousness on the second podcast yeah, I swear to God, because yeah. this is good. We're making this a thing. So, yes. do, do we have like a catchphrase to say afterwards, like on the like last part of the podcast? Like, we gonna do something? Oh, we should. Hmm. Jesse, you make it up. I'm gonna kill myself. Um.